Hey everybody, and welcome back to Northwest Small Batch Brewing. I am Steven, and uh, today is Brew Talk. And this one is an interesting one uh, that's going to have some controversy, I am sure. Uh, but here's the deal. Uh, there are, I should just make a list, I think, of things that home brewers have tried to take from commercial brewing and claim that it was is the right way to do home brewing when in fact it's not necessary or it doesn't really help or it's just not something you need to do at the home brewing level. There's this huge disconnect between some of the stuff they do at the commercial level and why they do it and why it really doesn't translate or need to be done at the home brewing level. So today's brew talk is about whirlpooling. What is whirlpooling to start with? If you're you know, not familiar with this term, basically what most homebrewers use, like what I do if you watch my homebrewing videos, is we have what's called a hop spider. It's like a cylinder of mesh and that's what you put your hops in it. So you get the flavor and extraction from the hops without actually having all the vegetal leaf, leafy matter from the hops getting into the actual wort and clogging things up. Not to mention it'll get bitter and astringent and so you want to keep it separate and be able to pull it out. So whirlpooling means that instead of using a hop spider, and this is what uh, people are going to say the benefit is, that you can just throw your hops directly into your, your boiling wort. And it, it can mingle and move around freely within the liquid. And then at the end of the boil, you take a special arm and you can buy, there, there's several out there. Uh, Claw Hammer Supply just came out with one. There was another one before that. Uh, I can't think of the name of it, um, but it's the same thing. It's basically an arm that like uh, hooks and goes down to the bottom of your pot. And then the other end of it is usually a um, recycle. So you're going to be um, pumping the wort from the bottom of the port, uh, pot through hoses, through a pump, back up into this whirlpool arm, back down. And if it's done properly, what will happen is it'll create like a vortex and it will make all the hot matter and other debris basically fall into a cone in the middle of the pot. That way, when you're ready to drain the pot, all the, the, the mo or most of the hot matter is going to be in the middle and it's not going to get sucked down into your fermenter. All right, that's the idea, okay? That's the, that's the benefit. It's the only benefit I can think of, right? Here's the problem. There's a few problems with this. The first one being, if you have a center drain, it's going to mess that up, right? Because it puts the cone in the middle. So I think the Brazilla has a center drain. Uh, I'd love to have a center drain on mine, by the way. But uh, that's a whole other story. Um, I've heard that you can use like maybe a false bottom, but I don't know how you wouldn't have the hot matter fall through the false bottom. So I'm not sure if that would work or not. Um, you also have to adjust your hops because let's be clear. We're not talking about, there's no such thing as a whirlpool addition. I don't like that term because you're not adding hops during the whirlpool, right? You're adding hops at flame out, so that's a flame out addition, or you're doing a hop stand where you put in hops and you're keeping the wort at a specific temperature for like, say, 20 minutes, and then you're gonna do your whirlpool. So it's, there's no such thing as a whirlpool addition, in my opinion. Um, so you have to adjust your hop schedule because if the hops are sitting in there for an extra 20 minutes or however long you're gonna whirlpool, it's extracting more bitterness out of them, right? So you have to make adjustments for that. That's that's one negative for sure. Um, it takes longer, right? You have to lengthen your brew day by you know at least 20 minutes or however long you're going to whirlpool. So there's that, right? It's already a long brew day, now you're extending it even longer. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. There's This is something they do in the commercial brewing world, right? This is what I was alluding to at the beginning of this video. So in the commercial brewing uh, brewing world, 
like many things, they are dealing with very large quantities, right? Huge vats of beer. And it just would not be feasible to use hop screens or hop spiders in a volume of beer that the amount of hops that they have to use in that volume of beer, you just can't use screens. It wouldn't, it's just not possible. So they have to do whirlpooling. And generally speaking, they actually whirlpool and then immediately drain down with the whirlpool into another vessel, which is something we're not doing at the homebrew level. Um, on top of that, they're using very high powered pumps to create that whirlpool. So if you're going to do a whirlpool properly at the homebrew level, you also have to invest in not only the homebrew arm, I'm sorry, the whirlpool arm, but you're probably also going to have to invest in a better pump than the one that you have. Most of us have a pump that's, that works fine, but not for whirlpooling. Whirlpooling needs extra, right? And there is a Blickman one out there. I, the name's eluding me at the moment that people really like at the homebrewing level. That's very powerful. Um, but the point is you probably need to invest in something like that to make this viable. Um, but that's, that's the reason they do it at the commercial level because they have to because of the sheer volume they're dealing with It's just the way it goes. It's kind of like cooling, right? Most of the time they're using glycol jacketed systems to cool the beer uh, in in a, in a commercial, you know Area because the, it's not feasible for them to use other methods of cooling, right? Whereas at the homebrew level again, this is you know debatable, but in my opinion I think glycol at the homebrew level is overkill unless you're making huge batches. If you're making like 10 plus gallons of batches, now you're starting to get to the point where it might be reasonable, right, to do some of this stuff. But if you're doing five gallons or less, glycol just is is overkill, big time. Uh, and I think, in my opinion, so is whirlpooling. Um, it's just th there's another thing, another thought here, uh, which is. There are gonna be the argument people are gonna make is that throwing the hops in without the hop spider extracts more hop flavor. And this is just my opinion. I, there's no proof on this. I just don't think it's true. Now I can't remember whether Brewlosophy or someone else did an experiment. I think someone did. If it was apartment brewer, or maybe it was Brewlosophy who partnered with a partner. I can't remember, right? But there was an experiment that I did see at some point recently. And I think the result basically was they couldn't tell the difference. I think if it was the one I'm thinking of, and it was with the apartment brewer and philosophy, I think apartment brewer did pick the right one out, but it was really a guess. I mean, he, he was admitting on the video that, oh, they're so similar, you know, that it's almost unperceptible, right? So I don't think the end result of the beer is worth doing the the whirlpool i don't think you're going to get a significant enough difference to use that as an as an excuse or a reason for all the extra equipment and time and effort that it would take so i will be sticking to the this the you know the hop spider um I, it you know it works fine for me uh, i have no issues with the beers i make so you know and like i say i think this is just another Another thing we were taking from the commercial brewing world and trying to make it fit into home brewing when it, it's not necessary to do that. Um, there's other things like mashing out, okay, that I, there's, a, there's a whole list of things that I think we've, we've stolen from the uh, commercial brewing world that we don't need to do at the home brewing level. Anyway, I'm running out of time here. Uh, I think I hit all the points I wanted to hit. Again, whatever you want to do, do it. It works for you do it um you know i'm just throwing ideas out there to think about so i will see you in another week for another video and uh until then keep on brewing <laughs>